Hi, this is a quick overview look at how to use the alternate firmware for the TS-100 soldering iron that I've written. This is loadable onto the TS-100 itself and also the other variations you find online. They all are still made by the same manufacturer as far as I'm aware and they all run the same hardware and the same software. When you first power up the soldering iron you'll see it show the version number and then a custom logo if you've programmed one to the iron. If you don't have one programmed, it will just skip straight to this main screen. The main screen is prompting you to let you know that this button will turn on the iron tip and that this button will enter the settings. This iron is currently running the 1.15 firmware, so if there's any new features added after this, they will not be present at the moment. When you first flash your iron with this firmware, I strongly recommend you go through the settings menu slowly and just understand what each of the settings does. So the first setting there is is Power SC, which is the power source you're selecting. This is used so that you can set it up whether you're using a DC input, which disables under voltage protection basically, or you can select a cell count for a 3, 4, 5 or 6S battery if you're using a lithium battery. When navigating the settings menu, the button on the right, which you use to enter the settings menu, also changes through the settings options. And the other button, the button on the left near the iron tip, changes the actual setting itself. So if you push this one, you can see it cycles through all of the options. If you enable power source and select a battery cell count, it'll also enable a little battery indicator when you're soldering, which is just based off the battery voltage, so it's not perfectly accurate, but it gives you a rough idea of where your battery sits at the moment. If we move on to the next setting, sleep temperature, or S-temp, this is the temperature the iron will automatically drop down to if you haven't moved it for a certain amount of time. So this is really good if you're the kind of person who leaves the iron alone, turned on for five minutes while you go do something and come back, as it keeps the iron still warm, so it's very, very quick to heat up, but it still doesn't keep it so hot that it gets that the tip gets damaged. This can be adjusted from 100 degrees all the way up to 300 degrees. SL time is the sleep time, so this is how long the iron will wait after you've stopped moving it before it goes to sleep. This defaults to one minute, which is pretty much the smallest option. So this means the iron will go to sleep really frequently on you, but it also means it's the most power saving and it's also the kind of safest option, because that way at least it'll turn off if in doubt basically. I generally leave this at about one or two minutes because if I'm working with an iron I generally have it in my hand the entire time. This is shutdown time, SH time. So this is how long after the iron enters sleep mode it waits before it actually fully shuts down and just lets the tip cool down. This is great for if you accidentally just leave the iron on because then you know, oh, I've left it on, but half an hour later it's gonna completely turn off and then the screen will turn off and it will draw a very minimal amount of power and there's no risk of you burning anything or any fires starting or anything like that. The downside is once it enters shutdown mode, Picking up the iron will not wake it back up again. You will have to push the button to manually start the iron up again. This is just intended so that if it's left on a desk and then you come along and you thump something down, it doesn't just suddenly start heating back up again when it was turned off. Motion sensitivity, or M-sense. This is a scale from zero to nine of the motion sensitivity steps. If it is zero, it will act like an old school iron, so it'll just turn on when you tell it, and turn off when you tell it, and that's it which disables a lot of the smarts inside this iron, but is great if you know what you're doing and you just don't want any buggering around with motion stuff. The steps between one to nine are basically an even distribution over the sensitivity the chip inside this iron has. So usually like a six to a seven is pretty good for most people. If you're in high vibration areas where you don't want background vibration to turn the iron on all the time to keep it awake, then you might want to turn it down a little bit. And if you're someone who tends to do lots and lots of little tiny fine movements and no big movements of like putting it back in a stand, then a value of nine might be better suited to you. This value is different person to person, so it's best just to test each one and just tune it how you like. Temperature unit, which is degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. I put this in at the request of a user a while ago and basically this just changes the display when you're soldering and when you're changing the soldering temperature, it doesn't change the rest of these menu items because the whole unit internally is entirely coded in Celsius. Temp round, which is temperature rounding. This is for if you really don't like the quick update rate of the screen so much, 
it will instead round the temperature off to the nearest 5 degrees or 10 degrees Celsius. So this means that the unit doesn't update the screen as quickly, it's not as flickery when you're looking at it, it'll tend to just kind of slowly jump its way up. And this is just some people's preference for the display. This acts in combination with the temperature speed update rate. This basically artificially slows down the update rate of the screen when you're soldering. So on like a fast update rate, it's really quick and jumpy and you can see like, oh, it's exactly this many degrees Celsius. Some people really don't like that flickeriness, so often medium or slow is a lot better for most users of this iron, and that's why it defaults to a speed of medium. This seems to be about a really nice point in the middle. He flips the display upside down. This is done for left-handed people, and people who just prefer to use the iron in their left hand, or for whatever reason want the display upside down. This basically configures the display at startup to just flip everything for you. So there's no special need for anything in the code. This does mean this setting does need you to power cycle the iron after you change it. Boost mode, which defaults to off. This was a later addition. When this is enabled, it remaps these two buttons in soldering mode so that when you are in soldering mode, this front button instead becomes a boost button. The boost button changes the soldering temperature you're using so that while if you hold that front button down, it'll instead go to that temperature instead of the one you normally have set. This is really good if you're about to solder a big connection and you want the iron to heat up a little bit hotter first just for while you're getting started, and then you don't want it to be that hot for most of everything else that you're doing. So you don't need to keep changing the temperature up and down. So this basically gives you two temperature set points that you can swap between with just by holding a button. After you exit the settings menu, it saves all the settings to the internal program memory and for some settings, such as the motion sensitivity and the screen being flipped, you will need to power cycle the soldering iron after you've applied those settings. The extras menu on this soldering iron has some important features to it if your soldering iron is behaving weirdly in some way, shape or form. So if you push both buttons on the iron at once, the system will enter the extras menu and so by default, it shows the current tip temperature in degrees Celsius so that you can check against another reference that you have nearby to make sure your tip is reading correctly. If the temperature reading on your soldering iron tip does seem to be a little bit too far different from what you measure, either when it's cold or when it's hot, when your soldering iron temperature is cool, i.e. it is at room temperature and not has not been hit up for a while, enter the extras menu, push the button on the right, which will enter calibration for the temperature. You then push the button on the left, and the screen should change to Cal OK. If it says Cal Fail, your soldering iron tip is too warm. This is used to null the offset from your tip. Because some of the tips have slightly different variations tip to tip, this is just an easy way to set the system up for your particular tip so there's no offset. This is generally a very small value, like 2 or 3 degrees Celsius, so for almost everybody it's not an issue. But for some tips, it just helps a little bit more. You can then push this button to exit back to the normal temperature display. If your soldering iron seems to be turning off early or late using battery voltage, then your soldering iron might be like mine and may have an incorrect voltage divider where the tolerance of the resistors isn't quite perfect. So on this extras menu, if you push the left button, you'll enter display of the input voltage. So this is the voltage that it believes is coming into your soldering iron at the moment. If this is incorrect, i.e. it's reading too high or too low, if you push the button on the right, the display will start flashing. While the display is flashing like this, you can use these two buttons to go up and down in reading. So if I push this button, it'll slowly read down. If I push this one, it'll slowly go back up again. Find the one that's closest to what you measure is coming into your iron, and then push both buttons together to exit. This will then save your custom settings for the voltage input so that your iron reads as close as possible to the input and doesn't matter whether there's a slight drift on those resistors. To exit this, you then push the button on the left again. This will take you back to the extras menu and you can push both buttons together to exit to the main menu. To enter soldering mode of this iron, you simply push the first button on the left here and the system will start to heat up. While this unit is heating up, it does show the little chevron pattern on the right hand side pointing upwards which tells you that the tip is heating and that the system should be heating up. If you ever get this pattern and the tip is not getting hot, 
you may have a damaged tip or a dodgy connection inside your soldering iron. Next to this you can see the little tiny battery icon. This is there because I've enabled this iron for 5 cell count, a 5S battery, which is what I'm using to power it at the moment, and so it's showing an estimated state of charge of the battery. This is accurate to like 10-20%, but it's a good indicator of, oh this battery is getting flat, I should probably swap it out before I start a job. On the left hand side, there is the current tip temperature, which is its reading back of the tip. And so at the moment this one's set to 320 degrees C and so it's just slightly oscillating around there at the moment because there's no real solder on the tip. Because I've held this tip still for a minute now without moving it significantly, the unit has automatically entered into sleep mode. This C symbol here should not be here and will be removed in a firmware update very shortly. So it's showing the live temperature on the right hand side of what the tip's currently measuring as so that you can see the tip slowly cooling down and left it just tells you SLP for sleep mode. And then if you move the iron around, it will then start heating back up again, ready for you to go back to soldering. Because this iron has boost mode enabled, if you hold the front button on this iron while you're soldering, it'll enter boost mode, so a little B will appear on the screen and it'll start heating up to whatever your boost temperature is. Once you let go of this button, it'll drop back to normal and start cooling back down to whatever the set point temperature is. So you do not need to worry about whether you have it on or off, it'll just turn itself off when you let go of the button. Pushing the button on the right hand side will enter set temperature mode, so this is where you can set the temperature as to what value you would like it to be running at. And then you can either just wait a couple of seconds and it'll exit that mode, or if you want to exit that mode right now, pushing both buttons together will also exit that menu. If you have boost mode turned off, pushing the front button will normally enter the temperature adjustment screen as well. To exit from the soldering mode when you're done, pushing both buttons together will exit and the screen will display this warning saying cool, that the iron is cooling down from a higher temperature so that you can still be aware if you glance at the screen that oh it's still hot. This will dismiss itself automatically once the iron is cool enough or you can push any button to skip this screen and return back to the main menu. This firmware is developed as an open source project that I started originally because I really loved this soldering iron but I really wanted to be able to run off battery packs without having to have voltage alarm units plugged in all of the time. And since the hardware could do it, and they were very kind to open source the software, I developed this small variant of their original software. The software is hosted on GitHub, and you can find this easily by searching through Google for firmware for the TS100. It is completely open to suggestions. If you have any ideas of things you'd like added to this firmware, things you'd like changed, suggestions, even if someone wants to do a different language translation, I am completely open to any options at the moment. I maintain this because I really like this unit and this clear case was actually donated to me by the company Miniware who made this soldering iron as a thank you for the firmware, which was a very nice thing for them to do. I intend to keep maintaining this software as long as people want to keep suggesting ideas and I hope people find some use out of it and it serves people well.